truth will challenge your conviction of what you truly believe in. What truth will do? It'll have you tossing and turning. Truth is meant to convict. If you're here today, you just want to please God. Only the truth can set you Sundays at Central make a difference in my life, in your life. Sundays at Central make a difference in my life, in my life. The Central Church of Christ is a family-oriented congregation that believes that Jesus the Christ is the head of the church and that the Bible is right. We're comprised of a group of committed, imperfect people who are striving to walk with our Lord and Savior. Yes, Sundays at Central make a difference, but we want to ensure that we're impacting your daily lives. We're dedicated to making a difference, not only in the lives of our church family, but also in our surrounding communities. Central offers several classes, ministries, and programs for people of all ages that we're confident will fit your needs. We'd love to show you why our congregation is the right church home for you. So stop on by and join us for worship service so that you can experience how Sundays at Central make a difference. Welcome to Central Church of Christ, where Sundays at Central make a difference. to magnify the Lord and worship Him. Worship Him we have come into this house to magnify the Lord and worship Him. Oh, worship Him, Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Lord, and so forget about yourself and magnify the Lord and worship Him. Worship Him and so forget about yourself and magnify the Lord. And worship him, worship him, and so forget about yourself. And magnify the Lord and worship him. Oh, oh worship him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Central Church of Christ where Brother Willie Rupert Jr. is our minister. This is our morning worship. At this time, I'd like to ask you to please find your places and put aside all things that may be a distraction. If you are checking in on Facebook, our hashtags are hashtag forgotten verse, hashtag fearless faith. Again, hashtag forgotten verse. Hashtag fearless faith. 176, standing on the promises. Please stand for our opening song. We'll be led in prayer by Brother Lee following this election. 
We will sing all five verses. However, we will not sing the chorus until the fifth and final verse. Again, we will sing all five stanzas straight through and then wrap up with the uh, uh, chorus. Excuse me. Let us sing. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt of fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. I am standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I now can see. Perfect present cleansing in the blood for me, standing in the liberty where Christ makes free. I am standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. I am standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all. I am standing on the promises of God, I know we are standing, I am standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, I am standing, I am standing on the promises of God, I know we are standing, I am standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, I am standing, I am standing on the promises of God. We've got prayer. Father of heaven, we come before your throne of grace this morning, as humble as we know how, just to say thank you, Father, for all your many rich blessings. Father, we're just so grateful for another blessed, privileged day you allow us to see that we may stand before you on this day and worship you in spirit and all truth. Father, we just come asking for the forgiveness of our sins and transgressions as we forgive those who sin and transgress against us, Father. Father, we come asking for prayers for those in the household of faith. Bless those who are sick. Bless those who may be weak, that you may strengthen them, and bless those who may have bereaved, that you may comfort them, Father. And Father, we just ask to bless those who may be on their way. Bless the minister and his family, that they may travel safe passage back this week, Father. And Father, we just come asking for prayers for those in the leadership of this nation, and this state, as well as this city. Continue to bless them, that they may make sound decisions, that peace may abound. But Father, we're just so thankful for your grace and your tender mercies. We're just so thankful for the church. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit. And mostly we're thankful for your Son and our Savior, Jesus. We just pray that, Father, the things we may do here today may be pleasing unto thee. As we always continue to seek to serve and to do your will, Father. For we say this prayer in the name of the Son of the living God, Jesus the Christ. Let us all say amen. amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you we're singing Oh, we're singing, Alleluia. 
147, Jesus, hold my hand. <clears throat> 147, Jesus, hold my hand. <clears throat> Let us sing. As I travel through this hill, from a land there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me as safely through the sing, King, I sat in the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy life to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. I need a day every hour. Through 
before our scripture reading, responsive reading, and prayer, Mansion Robe and Crown. <clears throat> Mansion Robe and Crown 34 in our supplementary song books. <clears throat> Mansion Robe and Crown. <clears throat> Let us sing. I'm going to trade a fire play home for battle while right and fair for oh, Christ left to prepare a mansion for his children in the air. I'll join them in that land where tears nor sorrows can be found. And I'll receive a mansion. I want to roll, roll and crown a mansion. Oh, I want to roll and a crown. Today's scripture will be taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 and 30. Again, that is Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 and 30. The Bible reads, By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land, where the Egyptians assigned to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, after they were compassed about seven days. I read unto your hearing Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 and 30. I ask you all please stand to be read in response to reading by Brother McKinley. Our response to reading today will be taken from the book of Psalms. That's 138, verses 1 and 2. That's Psalms 138, verses 1 and 2. Please repeat after me. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. 
we have just read together. Psalms 138, verses 1 and 2. May the Lord continue to add a rich blessing to the reading and reciting of his word. Please remain standing as Brother Reginald Sally lead us in prayer. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. Most holy and all wise, all knowing God, my heavenly Father, creator and maker of all things, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we come before your presence to say thank you, Lord, for this day, for this is the day that you have made. Lord, we rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and for your truth. Most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who came, suffered, bled, and died that we may have life and life more abundantly. Father, we ask this morning that you have mercy upon us. Please forgive us, Father, God, of all our sins and acts of righteousness. We pray that you forgive us, Father, where we have sinned in thought, word, or deed. Father God, that you will cast it, Father, and that we rise up to trouble us no more in this life, nor in the life to come. Father God, we ask that you be with us this day. Father God, we ask thy blessing upon this worship service that it be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Father, we ask thy blessings this morning upon Brother Frazier. Father God, that you will endow him with power from on high, that he will boldly proclaim your word, telling us, Father God, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Father, have mercy upon him and bless him in his ministry, Father God. We pray for Brother Rupert and his wife in his absence, that you be with them this day, Father God. Father God, we ask that you have mercy and that you bless those, Father God, who are sick among us. Father God, you'll touch and heal their bodies if it is your holy and righteous will. We pray, Father, for those who have lost loved ones. Father God, that you would comfort them as only you can. Let them know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot cure. Let them know today, Father God, we just pray that you give them that peace that's a passive all understanding. We pray, Father God, for the central church of Christ. Father, that we be the church that you're looking for in these last and evil days, a church without spot and a church without wrinkle. We pray that you continue to give us that love that goes from heart to heart and breast to breast. That we, Lord, not love in, in word, Father God, but we love in deed. We pray to help us, Father God, to be an evangelistic church, telling a dying world about a living Savior. We pray, Father God, you will help us, Father God, to walk, that men may see you in us, that men may see our good works and glorify you in heaven. Father God, just band us together in love and unity one for another this morning. That love that goes from heart to heart and breast to breast. And Father, when it's all said and done, and Father, we must press a dying pillow. Stick our swords in the sands of time and study war no more. We pray that you meet us and receive us. When they see your face and hear your voice, say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We ask these blessings in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. I really love
It won't be very long. <clears throat> Let us sing. It won't be very long till this short life shall end. It won't be very long till Jesus shall descend. And then the dead in Christ from death of clay shall rise to meet the Lord and King up yonder in the skies. And it won't be a very shall appear that day his draw all in near will you be ready then to meet the ransom throng again ready for that for that day and it won't be very long it won't be very long till here we cease to wrong it won't be very long till all the saints get home Savior's praise where saints are never old and it won't be a very long and it won't be very very long till Jesus shall appear that day his draw all in here will you be ready then to meet the ransom throng again ready for that for that day and it won't be Shall appear that day, his draw all in 
and again. Good to see everybody this morning on this Lord's Day. The Lord has blessed us to come into this building to worship him. We pray that everybody is doing well and everything is going good with you at this time. We want to also keep the Ruperts, brother and sister Rupert, in our prayers as they are in Mississippi visiting their moms. We pray that God will bless them to have a safe journey back home. Again, it's good to see everybody this morning, and we uh, pray that we have any visitors with us this morning that you are our honored guests. And if we have any visitors, as our ushers are coming forward, if you can simply raise your hand and take a visitor's card so that we can have a record of your visit. Amen. I see one here in the middle aisle. see one on the outside, two on the outside. Amen. Amen. Glad to keep your hands raised so they can... So they can give you a card. Uh, brother Ease, don't move too fast, brother. There you go. I don't want to miss any visitors. Amen. 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 Glad to have you this morning. Also, we want to keep those in our prayers who are bereaved at this time. Please keep the Taylor family in your prayers as Sister Jessica Taylor was funeralized uh, last week. And also others who may... Uh, at this time, be bereaved because of a loss of a loved one. Please keep them in your prayers. Also, keep those in your prayers that are sick and shut in. And I just want to make a special mention, want to keep Brother Paul Hall in our prayers also. So those uh, who are maybe suffering from the COVID or those who just have just, national, uh, just uh, natural ailments or sickness, please keep them in your prayers. Well, this is not a surprise to anybody of the man who's about ready to speak before you. He's a son of Central. He has worked many years here at Central before he moved on to labor with the East Baltimore Church of Christ. I got to commend this brother because he will take on a work and won't ask you questions. He just said, here am I, send me. This brother was involved in our first national lectureship back in 1998. He was a project manager and did an excellent job. His work was so magnificent that it raised the bar for the national lectureship. And we commend him for that. Not only that, he worked in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, assisting that church as the minister. And then he's back home in Baltimore working with Brother Kevin Bethia at the East Baltimore Church of Christ. Now, I don't have a, I have a lot to say, but I'll let him say the rest of it. But you know how they say, you know, let someone else brag on you. But I have a lot to brag on this, brother. So without further ado, let us stand and welcome the man of the hour, Brother Larry Frazier. Let us all stand. 646, just <clears throat> a little talk with Jesus. 646. <clears throat> let us sing. I once was lost in, didn't know but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my, it filled my soul, you know, and it made my heart in. Oh, I had wrote my name above. And now just a little talk with Jesus that makes me whole. Oh, now let us have a little talk with, and let us tell them all a, oh, and he will hear our faith. Sometimes my past sings, you know, without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. Oh, you know, the mist of sin may, you know, and I the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus can live the way. Hey, now let us have a little talk with and let Who watches day and night? Oh, you know I go 
to him men. You know he knows by every care. And just a little talk with Jesus it makes it, it makes it. And now let us have a little talk with, and let us tell them all our, oh, and he will hear our faintest, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little, oh, and as your heart under heaven is, and you will find a little talk with Jesus, it makes it, it makes it. And now let us have a little, oh, and let Tell them all I guess, and he will hear our faintest, and he will answer by and by. Now, when you feel a little, oh, and as your heart under heaven is, and you will find a little talk with Jesus, it makes it, it makes it. And now, let us have a little, oh, and let us tell them all I guess, and he will hear. Our fate is, and he will answer by and by. Now, when you feel a little, oh, and as your heart under heaven is, and you will find a little talk with Jesus, it makes it, it makes it right. Good morning. Good morning, Central Family. I can't tell all of you by these masks, but I know your eyes. It's so good to see you all as always. I was looking for Sister Fouts over there, but I finally spot her back there in the middle. Good morning, Sister Fouts. How you doing, sweetie? It's always good to see you, and it's always good to come home to Central. It's like when you send your kids away, they always can come back home. Yeah, they can't stay, but they can always come back home. And Central will always be my home. God is not good some of the time. God is good all of the time. And all of the time, God is good. I I'm so grateful for uh, Brother Rupert for the invite to uh, come back to share a thought with you. I'm grateful for Brother Good for that introduction. No man has never done anything by themselves. And I can say from all of my years, I got to Central when I was in college and, and came back, and Central has always had a visionary. Brother Fouts was a visionary and brought Central to to where Central is, and now you got another one in Brother Rupert who, who see what God sees in you. And, and, and I hope and pray that you will always trust the man of God. And I'm so grateful for the Ruperts and, and for all of you who labor here at the Central Congregation. I was talking to uh, Brother Good in the... Uh, office earlier this uh, before we came up and I, I told him that um, I'm going to be retiring at the end of the year and uh, my wife and I are moving relocating to Florida. We put our house on the market on Friday. Uh, they, we don't have a house finished in Florida yet but, but uh, I trust God and so, uh, and I trust that you are going to pray for us, that God would bless us not only to sell our house, but to, to get one in Florida. And, and, and yeah, I'm not going back to South Carolina. South Carolina gotten too cold for me also. And I want to live where the temperature never dropped below 50 degrees. I, I'm a southern boy by nature. And, and Brother Jones, I, could, you, I, I can't get too hot for me. And, and you all have allowed us to use and stay in your city, city and state long enough. And we're going to give that back to you by the will of God at the end of the year. So, so pray for us and 
I know I'll be back here before the end of the year if I just have to come back and hug you all uh, one more time before we leave. So keep us in your prayer. Pray for uh, brother and sister Rupert. I talked to the Rupert, la well, I talked to brother Rupert last night and sister Rupert was in the background hollering, hey, brother Frazier, and I love you, and, and you know, so I talked to the Rupert last night and they made it safe and they're doing well. Uh, I want to share a thought with you this morning from Hebrews chapter number 11, the passage that Brother Rudolph read into your hearing. Thankful for Brother Nash for leading us in songs and Brother McKinley for reading us the um, we corresponded uh, verses from the psalmist. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 29 and verse 30. The Hebrew writer says, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians ascended to do were drowned. Verse 30 says, by faith, the wall of Jericho fell down. After they were compressed about seven days. 29 says, by faith they passed through the Red Sea by dry land. 30 says that the wall fell down. I don't want to really talk to you about verse 29, and I don't want to talk to you about verse 30. I want to talk to you about the verse that's in between verse 29 and verse 30. And, 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 I, and I see you, you're looking at me, you say, there is no verse between 29 and verse 30. No, no, not in the Bible. They didn't write that one. They forgot that one. And so if you give me a minute of your time, let me talk to you from the subject, the forgotten verse. In other words, someone thought that it wasn't appropriate to write what happened between verse 29 and verse 30. And, and, and you Bible students, and, and you know the Bible that uh, between verse 29 and verse 30, 40 years, a whole generation had, had, had focused and had come into existence because the people in 29 was not the people that walked around the wall. And, and so I, I, want, I want us to, to take a look at that. And, 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 and if you are a Bible student, you know the, the book of Hebrews was written back to those Jews who were in Rome who had left uh, Judaism and had gone into Christianity, and now they were about to go back to Judaism. But the Hebrew writer writes them and warns them that they should not go back unto Judaism because Christianity is what God intended for man to do. So the Hebrew writer starts by in Hebrews chapter 1, God in sundry time and in divers manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. 
but in these last days he spoke unto us by his son whom he had appointed heirs of all things by whom also he made the world and he said whom being in the brightness of his own glory and then ex and in the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word he said also by himself who purged our sin and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So the Hebrew writer warns them that something greater than the law had showed up. The Hebrew writers warned them that something greater than the angel had showed up. The Hebrew writer warned them that someone greater than Moses had come into existence. And when we get to Hebrews chapter number 11, the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And then the Hebrew writer said, With, after all, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, Abraham, Abram, offered up a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Enoch was translated. By faith, Noah built an ark. And on and on, by faith, Moses. By faith, the Hebrew writer said, uh, uh, Je uh, Joshua, by faith, on and on, by faith. Without faith, brothers and sisters, we cannot please God. And that brings us to my text this morning. By faith. They passed through the Red Sea on dry land. But that's not what I want to talk about. By faith, the wall of Jericho fell down. That, that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in what happened in that 40 years. Between uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 29 and Hebrews chapter number 30, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 30. But see, you're not going to be able to see what I'm talking about unless I take you back to where it all started. Uh, go back with me to Numbers chapter number 13 and verse number 1. Numbers chapter 13 and verse number 1. You remember in, in Numbers uh, uh, chapter number 12, uh, the people had begun to, to murmur. And, 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 and God had given Israel Canaan the promised land. And, and, and when God gave them the promised land, they, they, they said, and, 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 and God permitted, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, the people said to Moses, we need to go and, and, and scout out the land. So when we get to Hebrews chapter number 13, God agreed with the people. God allowed the people to go and, and, and scout out the land. So in Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse 1, the Bible says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and said, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, for which I had given unto the children of Israel and, and every tribe of their father, they shall send a man. Now, brothers and sisters, the first thing that we need to understand when God gives you something, you don't need to send man to check it out because when God gives it to you, it's exactly the way God is. But sometimes we think we're smarter than God is. Sometimes we need to see what God is saying. So what God did, God said unto Moses, 
I want you to send 12 men, one from each tribe of Israel. Now, it's amazing, brothers and sisters, because when in verse number 29, the text said that they walked across the Red Sea on dry land. Now, how did that happen? It happened because God banked the water on both sides and allowed them to walk across on dry land. Do you think you can go to the Chesapeake Bay and walk across the Chesapeake Bay on dry land? That is totally impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Now, God allowed Israel to walk across the Red Sea on dry land. And when they got on the other side of the Red Sea, they began to question God. God told them, I'm going to give you Canaan, the promised land, and the land is flowing with milk and honey. But man don't trust God. So they said, let us send a spy. Now, God allowed Moses to do it, not to please God, because God already knew what he had done. See, Central, every now and then, you need to just trust the man of God, because God had already given the man of God the message to give to you. But so many times we think we're smarter than God. We want to see for ourselves. So what God did, he allowed them to send 12 men, one from every tribe. And they went into Canaan and they searched out the land. And when we get down to verse number 24, the Bible said, the place was called the Brook of Quran because of the clusters of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from hence. They went. God told them that the land was flowing with milk and honey and everything that you need is in the land. But they didn't trust God. So they wanted proof that the land was filled with milk and honey. So God allowed, told Moses to send them. And they sent men to spy out the land. And they came back and they said that the land is flowing with milk and honey. And here is proof. We brought back grapes, and they returned from the search of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all of the congregation of the children of Israel on, on, into the wilderness. And they said, this land, that God gave us is exactly what God said. See, God knew what the land was about, but the people didn't have confidence in God's messenger. See, sometimes when Brother Rupert says something, you may can't see it because it's not for you to see. Sometimes you just got to trust that God had given him the vision and everything central is going to work out just the way God said it. God has always had a man. And when God sent them, when these people went and they came back and they said to Moses and to Aaron and they showed them the fruit of the land and they told him and said, we came unto the land where art thou sent us and surely it is flowing with milk and honey 
Now, this was no surprise to God. See, God knew what it was all about the whole time. But now when we get down to verse uh, number 28, here we go. They, in verse 27, they said the land is just like God said. They say the land is flowing with milk and honey. But how come you go from 27 to 28 and then you say, well, nevertheless. Brothers and sisters, never bring up nevertheless when God has given us some instruction. Nevertheless, they said, the, the people being the land are strong that dwell in the land. And the city are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of the Hittite. Now, it wasn't a surprise to God that there were people in the land. God knew that there were people in the land. In spite of God knowing, God still gave them the land. The people knew that, see, the only confused people was the one that was going to possess the land. The, the Amorites, the Hittite, the Jezebite, all of those that were in the land knew that they were coming because God had already told them they were coming. But when they got there, even when they send the spies in the land, they didn't believe God. They said, the land is flowing with milk and honey, but there are giants in the land. So many times, brothers and sisters, we get ourselves in a situation that we so wrapped up in the so, so situation that we can't grasp the solution to the situation. We're more concerned of what's happening instead of being able to find out what the solution was. And so then we get over to Numbers chapter number four, uh, 14. And, and watch what the Bible says. See, sometimes, Central, God could have us to do things and we murmur so much in the process that we make God mad with us. So God got angry. In, in, in verse four, uh, 27, God said, how long should I bear with this evil generation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmuring of the children of Israel, which they murmured against me, saying that they are truly as I live, says the Lord, as, as you have spoken in my ears, so I will do unto you. They, God brought them, brothers and sisters, listen to me. God brought them out of Egyptian captivity. They got to the Red Sea and they said, how are we going to go across? Because there's water in front of me and there is the Pharaoh's army behind me. We are stuck in the middle of death on every side. We're going to drown in water, and if we go back, we're going to die at the hand of these, of these Egyptians. But watch what God said. God says to Moses, stand still and see the glory of God. See, central every now and then, we just need to stand still and see the glory of God. You, you remember when you first started to feed people? How are we going to feed all these people? Don't worry about how you're going to do it. Just be ready to work on doing it when God provides the food for you to do it. You got so much food that you gave us some over in East Baltimore. And you, why are you feeding? Because God gave somebody the vision. 
Don't get so wrapped up in the situation that we cannot see the solution that God is offering. So that the text says, God says, your caucus shall fall in this wilderness and all that were numbered of you according to your own whole number from 30 years and 20 years and older and upward which had murmured against me. Everyone from 20 years and older, those of you who think you got the authority to speak against God, God said, I'm going to give you the promised land. But because of your murmuring, your caucus is going to fall in the wilderness. Now, now what, what happened, Brother Frazier? Now, God did not change his mind on the land. He changed the people. Brother, Brother Good, I remember sometime, Brother Fout said, death is the only way you're going to get rid of some of these evil folks. You can't fight everybody that is evil. You got to let God take care of the evil folks. He would always tell us, don't worry about when somebody says something. You just let them go ahead and talk. He said, God will take care. But Brother Faust, these folks are evil. Yeah, but Larry, you got to leave some things up to God. All you got to do is be ready and willing to do what God wants you to do. Don't worry about the folks, the naysayers, who's not going to do something. So they made God mad. And they sent the spies out. And the text said they were out there for 40 days. And what God did, he gave them the land. But he swore on himself, not one person older than 20 will inherit the land except for Caleb and Joshua. See, sometimes, those of you who want to do right, you got to wallow with those who want to do evil until God takes care of them. All you got to do, brothers and sisters, is hold fast to God. So the text said, the text said for, for each year, that the spy, for each day that the spies went out, you're going to water in the wilderness one year. They came. They came across the Red Sea. And when they got across the Red Sea, it was only 11 day journey from the Red Sea to Canaan, the promised land. But God caught, but God, God caused them to wander around in the wilderness 40 years on a journey that should have only taken 11 days. But 40 years, they walked around in the wilderness when God, when they could have, uh, they could have taken the land in 11 days. But because of their murmuring, that's another message for us here this morning. If you murmur, repent and stop murmuring and allow God to use you in this vineyard. 40 years, they went. And what the guy said, we see the milk, we see the honey, 
The land is just the way God says, but there's giants in the land, and we cannot take the giants. See, you thinking about fighting the giants. You don't need to fight the giants. You need to lead the giants up to the giant killer. That's God himself. Every now and then, brothers and sisters, we just need to stand still and allow God to use us in our lives. So they went. God says, your carcass shall fall in this wilderness, and all the numbers of you, according to your age, See, that was one time, Brother Good, you happy to be 20. You didn't want to be 30. You wanted to be 20. Because if you were 20, Sister Jones, you would fall in the wilderness if you were 21. 40 years between Hebrews chapter 11, 11 and 29 and Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 30. That, that, that's the missing. That, that, that's the forgotten verse. That's the verse that the Hebrew writer did not see fit to put in there. And wonder why did the Hebrew writer did not put it in because of their lack of faith. Now, now let me ask this question. If the Hebrew writer had to rewrite the book of Hebrew, will he leave you out? Because of your lack of faith? Will you be in the faith book? Or you will be like those who left uh, Egyptian captivity? Will your carcass fall in the wilderness because of your unbelief? Or will your name be next to by faith? central move by faith they did all that God had to say or would they would your name be left out because you lack faith so the Hebrew writer the Hebrew writer says and Caleb verse 30 and Caleb stood the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess the land, for, where are, for we are well able to overcome. Twelve men went. Twelve men saw the same thing. Eleven of them came back with however... But we are not. Nevertheless, they are giants. See, the only surprise was those that went. If they went and if they decided to trust God and not to go, they wouldn't have known that there were giants until they got there. But when you get there, brothers and sisters, you have to trust that God will not forsake or leave you. But it's our faith that keeps us from taking all of God's blessing. We spent all of our first-rated strength on second-rated things. So many times, our physical body deny our spiritual body of God's blessing. And then, then we get to verse 30 of Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible said, and the wall <laughs> fell down. But the wall just didn't fall. God says, I want you to go. and take seven days 
And each day, I want you to march around the wall. Every day, I want you to march one time around the wall. And on the seventh day, I want you to march around the wall seven times. And then, and then I want you to take the, trump, the seven trumpets. Now, the trumpets is not used to fight wars. I want you to take the seven trumpets, and after you march seven times, on the seventh day, I want you to blow the trumpet seven times. And when you blow the trumpet seven times, then the wall is going to fall. My brothers and sisters, don't get mixed up here now. Them marching around the wall seven times wasn't what brought the wall down. They blowing the trumpet, it was not what brought the wall down. What brought the wall down, brothers and sisters, was their faith in God to do what God says exactly the way God said it. See, so many times we want to do things, but we don't want to do it the way God said it. Or you could walk around a wall 107 times. That ain't going to bring the wall down. You can blow a trumpet for seven days. That will not bring the wall down. What will bring the wall down, preacher? Your faith in God. To do exactly what God said. See, we, we in this pandemic and we thinking that we at the end of the world. And it's a struggle to get people in service on Sunday morning because they say, I'm not going to that church because I might get COVID. But when you go, you see them in the, in the Giants. You see them in Safeway. You see them shopping. They go to work. The, all, the company saying, everybody back to work. Uh, Morgan told us, everybody got to be back to work on August the 2nd. I got three people to call me. Well, I don't trust. I don't feel safe coming back. And all three of them are in an office by themselves. But when you go, you find them in the mall. Yeah. How in the world Sunday could be our most unfaithful day? Yeah. I'm not going to church because I might catch something. I haven't heard of nobody, Brother Good, got COVID coming to worship. See, our, our problem is we done got home and we done got comfortable. We don't want to listen to God. It's time to come back to worship God. The Hebrew writer said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. God has allowed us. Now, now, don't get me wrong. Through this pandemic, we have reached more people via this media than we have ever reached before. And you know why the pandemic came? And this is my story. We stopped door knocking, Brother Good. So God sent the pandemic so we can still get the gospel out to some people. There's more people listening to the Church of Christ today than ever before. But, and, and some of them want to come. But those of us that are members of the body of Christ, our faith have caused us, I'm not going. And ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I need to be farther than six feet. And when you're in the Giants, you're walking right past the next person. When you're in the mall, you're walking right past the next person. You ain't thinking about that when you go to the bank. I got to go get some groceries. We got to go shopping. You don't think about getting COVID. You full up from, sun, from Monday to Saturday night. And then come Sunday morning, all of a sudden, you're worrying about getting COVID. You don't think about COVID through the week. Paul writes this letter to the church at Rome and said, Brother, in my heart's desire, my prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. 
They got a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. They, being ignorant of God's righteousness, had gone about to establish their own righteousness, not heeding unto the righteousness of God. He said, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness sake. Brothers and sisters, we just need to put our trust in God. I, I, I tell you, 1920 was a rough year for me. In January, I had pneumonia. In June, I had COVID. In December, I had shingles. And through all of that, Brother Good, God brought me through. And, and you know what? When I had COVID, they didn't have a cure. The vaccine wasn't even available yet. So the vaccine didn't cure Brother Frazier of COVID. God did. So I'm going to put my trust in God. And everything is going to be all right. You, you can hug me now. I'm, 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 I'm free of the COVID. I got both shots. I don't have no temperature. Once I'm done preaching, my temperature go back down. To, when, when I came in, they, they said you were 96-something. 90, I said, well, I'm happy because I feel like I'm 107. I just got done preaching. Yeah. But brothers, see, why is there not a verse between Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 29 and verse 30? Because Hebrews 11 is about faith. The Israelites, they didn't have no faith. So in order to capture them, I had to go back the numbers. I, I had to go back to Deuteronomy to show you all them. But I, I want us to understand that God did not took back his blessing. He still gave Israel the blessing. He just gave it to another generation of God's people. So if you're in this generation, and if you fail to do what God instruct you to do, don't be surprised if you don't get God's blessing. God will give his blessing to Central, but he'll give it to another generation. See, see I know. There's a lot of things I don't know, Randy. But there's one thing I know about Central. There was a time when we would come in and the rafters would be filled. There was a time we was over there on, on Woodridge Road side and there was three servants. You had to get there if you wanted to see. And God gave a man a vision to, to put this side up and the rafters was filled. And they got, well, they, they got like Israel. They started murmuring. They didn't want to accept the blessing. So what did God do? God said, I'll give your blessing to another generation. Don't y'all mess up and, and miss this blessing. Yeah. And, 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 you, and you remember what God told Moses? Speak to the rock. And, and Mo, what did Moses do? Moses struck the rock. And God said, because of your disobedience, you will not go into the promised land. Now, God still loved Moses. Because we heard, but at the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses, God still loved Moses. Why? Because Moses was God's man. But see, God tell us, you do what I tell you to do. You put your trust in me. And, and, and see, Brother Faust took it as far as God wanted him to carry Central. And now he give you Brother Rupert. Yeah. And, and Brother Rupert is going to carry it as far as God wants him to carry Central. And then when God said to Brother Rupert, that's enough, he'll find somebody else. 
But brothers and sisters, you must always trust God. And you trust God, everything will be all right. So if the Hebrew writer had to rewrite the book of Hebrews, I trust that your name will be in the book and not be the forgotten verse. By faith, central move according to all that God said for him to be. If you're here this morning and you're not a member of the body of Christ, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Believe with all your heart Christ died for you and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Repent of your sins and confess your faith in Christ and be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. The angels will add your name to the Lamb Book of Life. God will add you to the church. Be faithful unto death. And if you're a member of God's family, don't you lose faith in God. Trust God, and everything will be all right. Let us stand as Brother Nash lead us in the song. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he shed on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, you can do better than that. Say amen. amen. Thank God for the message on this morning. Let's give Brother Frazier a love deposit. <laughs> the forgotten verse. The forgotten verse. Very well done. Thank you, Brother Frazier, for, for sharing the word with us today. But by faith, church. But by faith. We don't have to be forgotten. We don't have to be forgotten. But we thank God for the message on the day. I want to pray for Brother Frazier and for his, for his ministry, pray for his family, especially as they make preparations even to, to transition even from this area. But we thank him for his love and his, his commitment to the Word of God and for sharing with us today. And if you are out there either virtually or here in person and you have a question or you want to respond to our invitation, please send us a message. And if you're here in person and you have a question about anything that has been said, we stand ready to, to address your issues, your questions that you might, might have. At this time, we do have those, those that have submitted their prayer request, and we ask your attention um, at this time. Brother Garner, please pray for my wife and my father-in-law. Also pray for my family and traveling grace as we go on vacation next week. Keep the Garner, Furby, Crowley, and the Jackson family in your prayers. Sister Donna Moody, please pray for Brother and Sister Paul and Vera Hall. Also pray for a co-worker of mine, Priscilla Garrett, for her mental state of mind, that she will receive peace. Sister Murray, please pray for Miss Brenda Robinson for her sudden loss of her husband, Paul Robinson, and his family. Sister Vanessa Scott, 
I want to thank everyone for praying for me, for my procedure went fine, things are well. Continue to keep me and my family in your prayers. Also keep um, Donna Allen in your prayer as she's still um, having problems with her back. Sister Alsop, Central Family, I'm confessing that I've sinned, I've repented of that sin. Please keep me in prayer uh, for my spiritual walk in Christ. Keep your sister, our sister Chantel Teal, who is not feeling well um, in our prayers as well. Also keep my entire family in your prayers. Sister Catherine Allen, please pray for Sister Catherine Allen at this time. She's pre presently staying with her daughter. Sister Chapman, thanks for your calls, cards, during the loss of my great-granddaughter. Uh, Sister Linda Wall Waller, I'm asking for prayers for the, in the passing of Sister Waller's niece, Angela Bro Broadway. Please pray for the McNair, Johnson, Burgess, Holmes, Waller, and Bailey family. Um, keep them in, in your prayers. Sister Rupert, please keep Sister Alimo in our prayers in the loss of her sister. Also, Brother Hall, continue to pray for Brother Hall. Kimberly Griffin, please pray for my husband. He's been having a, a lot of health issues. Also pray for me and our children that we will fully, we will recommit fully to the Lord. Stacy Brinkley, pray for uh, Rhonda Okolo, who lives in Baltimore. She's been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Um, <clears throat> I'm asking the saints to pray, pray with me um, as we study. Sister Brinkley lives in Ohio, and she's looking for a contact here, and we'll be sure to contact her. Sister Lena Harris, please pray for Brother Chris Taylor, Christopher Tillery, um, son of Brother Governor Tillery. Um, he's been deployed active duty. He's on active duty deployment. Sister Cook, please keep Deborah Moore in prayer. She, she's relocated to Cambridge and is very sick. Keep my family in prayer for their health and strength during these troubled times. Also, I'm asking for prayers for the Holly family for traveling grace. Love my central family. <clears throat> Isaiah Swinton, please pray for me as I head to school on Tuesday. Thank you for all your support and encouragement. Nehemiah Swinton, today is my last Sunday before heading to, work, to Washington for university studies. Please pray for me as I travel and start school. Thank you for your support, all that you've given during this time, my time here. Sister Vanderpool, please pray for Sister, for sister Alima in the loss of her sister. Please keep the Alimo Tedith family in your prayer in the loss of Sister Elizabeth um, Alimo. Also, continue to pray for my grandmother, Mercy Nordy, and Sister Abigail Otto in your prayer. I'm asking for prayers for the Vanderpool family. Sister Pfeiffer is asking for prayers for financial, um, for a friend, uh, and for her family's relationship. Sister Brenda Brooks. Asking your, your prayers for, especially for my granddaughter as she receives her first COVID, COVID shot. Sister Vieira Ville, please continue to pray for Jeff and Lisa Ville and the entire Ville family. Please pray for my grandmother, uh, Lillian Good. This completes all of our prayer requests. We do want to remember those that have lost loved ones, those, those that are sick those that are traveling, and all of our many students that are be headed back to school soon, either locally or far, we want to remember them in our prayers. At this time, let us go to God in prayer. Eternal God, all-wise Father, we're so thankful, Father, for your love and 
We thank you, Father, for your kindness and all your mercy you bestowed upon us. We thank you, Father, for even allowing us this privilege that we might be here and that we might hear the message that has been spoken even in our hearing today. We thank you, O Lord, for Brother Frazier. We thank you for his labor in the word. And we thank you for the message that has been laid upon our hearts. And we pray, Father, that you would continue to bless him and bless his ministry, bless his family. And, Father, we ask especially that you will remember those that have laid their petitions before us even this day. Father, we, we bow to you because we know that you, you are able and you have all power within your hands. And we know, O oh God, that you hear all and you know all. And we just ask, O oh God, that you will remember those that are sick, that you would heal their bodies. We pray that you would comfort them where they stand in need of comfort. You will be with those that administer love and care to those that are sick. Those that have lost loved ones, Lord, we pray that you would comfort our hearts. We pray, Father, that you, you would continue to be with us and encourage, that we might be encouraged each and every day. We ask, O oh God, your blessings on those that have repented of sins, that you will restore them back to your kingdom. Those, O oh Father, that are, that are traveling, especially our students who will be departing, we pray that your traveling grace might be with them, your angels might ever be present in their lives, that you will protect them and guide them, Father, as they continue even in their studies. But, Father, even bless their families as they have gone, they'll be away from their home. We pray that you might give them comfort and assurance that all things work together for good to them that love you. And we just thank you for this congregation. We thank you for each and every member. We ask that you will bless us. You will bind us together in love and harmony. We ask a special prayer, Father, for those that might be visiting with us even today, and especially those that might be here that, are, that have not obeyed the gospel in the pardoning of their sins. And we thank you for this opportunity that we have to share together one with another. We thank you most of all for your son, Jesus, who died that we might live. And it's in his name we pray. We ask all things. Let us together say, amen. I keep falling in love with him as we transition into the offering. Let us sing. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over My Savior and I keep falling in love with Him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with Him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with Him over. Savior and I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Amen. As we prepare to give this morning, we have several methods that you can use. We first have the church app that we found on our website, ccocmd.org. You can give on that website. Or you can use the church app, which is the Give Plus, or the Church Central Church of Christ app that you can submit your offering. Or you can mail it to the church building at 4301 Woodridge Road. For those who are present this morning, if you have an offering, as the brothers get ready to move, can you please raise your offering so that they can come to you to receive your offering. Now concerning collections, for the saints as I give in orders to the churches in Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come.
Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they will go before you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. But God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always have an all sufficiency, and all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he had dispersed abroad, he had given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sowed, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the ministration of this service not only supplieth the wants of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of his, this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. But by their prayer for you, which long after you had exceedingly grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Now our Paul beseech you by the meekness of gentleness of Christ, who is present and unbased upon you, among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down a stronghold, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing in captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus. Dear God, we thank you that you blessed us. We're able to gather on this Lord's Day to give as you have prospered us throughout our, our work life. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the monies collected would be used in the various ministries and work here at Central, that it be, be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Bless us, dear God. Help us, Lord, to always have that Christ-like mind, that Christ-like love, to do your will and to love one another. Be with us, dear God, watch on, protect us, keep us always in your love and in your care. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. So we transition into the Lord's Supper, number 26 in the garden, and number 26. <clears throat> Let us say, I come to the garden alone while the dew it is still on the road, Moses and the boys I hear a falling on my ear. The Son of God is Moses, and he walks with me and he talks.
as we prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper, I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning of verse 23, and it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, And when he had supped, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink the cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Brother Jacob will come to give thanks for the emblem. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Please forgive me of my sins. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all your blessings. Most of all, just thank you for Jesus. At this time, I pray that you would help us just to remember his death, burial, and his resurrection. Help us remember, Father God, how he was spit upon. Help us remember, Father God, how he crushed a crown of thorns into his skull. Help us remember, Father God, how they beat him, whipped him, Father God, to his back lay open, bloodied, Father God. Help us remember how they hammered nails into his hands. Help us remember, Father God, how they hammered nails into his feet, how they hang him on a tree of the cross. Help us remember, Father God, how they stabbed him in his side, Father God. Help us remember how he hung his head and died. Father God, also help us remember how he rose the third day with all power in his hands. So I pray that you would bless the unleavened bread, bless the fruit of the divine which represents his body and shed blood. Help us remember, Father God, the day God died in the man of Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Let's together say, amen. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation, written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if you will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour, and about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. 
And straightway, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. If all have been served, this concludes the communion portion of our service. Before we dismiss, I have a few announcements I'd like to present to you at this time. I'd like to start by commending Brother Larry Frazier. Excellent sermon preached this morning. The forgotten verse. I want to keep him in our prayers, especially when he makes that transition from Baltimore to Disneyland. I know you're going to be there every day. I want to keep Brother Frazier and his family in our prayers as he had done so much wonderful work here in the city of Baltimore. Amen. I have several visitors' cards. I want you to know to our visitors, you are honored guests, and we welcome you to any and all of our services here at Central. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to stop one of the brethren or just ask the minister, <clears throat> excuse me, and we will be glad to answer your question. I have several, so if I call your name, can you just stand for a brief moment so that we can recognize you and acknowledge your presence? We have Nicholas and Rachel Tufu, who, amen. They heard about the church from the preacher back home in Arkansas. Amen. We also have Trayon Blackwell, who's a guest of Daniel Beard. Amen. And he's sitting up front, just now put the baby down. We also have Anthony and Rosaline Nash, who heard about the church on the internet. Amen. And family. Amen. And lastly, we have Naya Young, or Nia Young. Oh, she's in the balcony. Amen. Glad to have you. Are there any other visitors that I missed that I have not called your name? Can you just stand for a brief moment, please, so they can recognize you? Amen. Amen. Glad to have you. And if our ushers, please see that he fill out a visitor's card. We'd like to have a record of your visit. Oh, you have one? Please fill it out, and we'd like to return it. And thank you for worshiping with us on this Lord's Day. Church, don't forget our prayer request line, which is every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. The telephone number is 410 943 6920. You would then speak with a live brother who would pray with you concerning anything that you would want someone to pray with you concerning things that you are going through or to pray for someone else. But we have a live prayer line every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Our next food giveaway, a Central's food giveaway, will be Saturday, September the 11th at 9 o'clock a.m. Okay, church, don't forget our upcoming vacation Bible school, which will be virtual. The dates are August the 23rd through the 27th at 7.30 p.m. nightly. And also, we are planning or preparing for our Sunday school in-person classes. We have adult classes as well as children classes. 
So our in-person Sunday school will start on September the 5th, on September the 5th at 9 o'clock a.m. And we also have our upcoming annual Labor Day picnic, which will take place on Monday, September the 6th at Patasco State Park. And the pavilion will be the Pickard Area Pavilion 706A. The time is from 10 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. And my last announcement, the University of Maryland Medical Center is offering free COVID-19 vaccine. Baltimore City residents 12 years of age and older are invited to schedule an appointment to receive a free Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine at Madame and Mall, 2401 Liberty Heights Avenue, and that's zip code is 21215. It's the second floor across the hall from Jackson Hewitt by the Great Cookie. And that's available Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. And the hours are subject to change. And to schedule an appointment, you can call 410-353-8123. And if you're under the age of 18, you would need a parent or legal guardian and walk-in appointments are also available. These are announcements that I have. Church, please have a safe day. Let us stand at this time as we let in a closing hymn and a closing prayer. Now I am a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. Yes, I am a hard fighting. Well, now you know I'm on the battlefield. Yes, I am a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battle. Well, now I'm going to keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Now I've got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on the battlefield. I now I've got to walk right and talk right. Souls to Jesus by the service that I give. And now I am a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. Yes, I am a hard fighting. Well, now you know I'm on the battlefield. And now I am a hard fighting. Well, now you know I'm on the battlefield. Keep bringing souls to. I'm gonna keep bringing souls to. I'm gonna keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Thirty-two. I forgot to announce there was a. Uh, keys that was left in the ladies' uh, bathroom downstairs. If you're driving a Honda, you're going to need these to get home. I have your keys. Thank you. Let us pray. All wise and eternal God, it is once again, we, your children, we, we come just giving thanks for this opportunity to gather together whether it be in person or virtually. We, we thank, thank you for the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the meal, Father, that you allowed your servant, Brother Frazier, to come and feed us. Yes. Father, we just thank you for his preparedness and his love for the brotherhood. We thank you for the wisdom O oh God of Brother Rupert, to ask him to come and feed the flock. Dear God, we just, we just love you so much. We just appreciate your son Jesus and the finished work of Calvary. 
For without that, we would have no hope. And so, Father, now that we've heard, help us, O oh God, to put into action those words of wisdom that come directly from you. The Father, help us to think evangelistically in everything we do, and that as we prepare to leave these four walls, that we remember that we don't have a choice in the matter. It's our obligation to teach someone. For Father, we don't, we don't need to hesitate, for you said you would be with us always. And so as we go into this week, Father, please help us to recognize those moments that you create for us to tell someone the old, old story of Jesus and his love. And how you paid the ultimate sacrifice, allowing him to be separate and apart from you for a season. We thank you, Father, for the gospel, for true salvation. We ask you, dear God, to let this message, this worship, dear God, encourage someone who has not named the name of Jesus Christ as their Savior being added to the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. Father, that you would touch their hearts. Give them no rest, no peace until they say yes to Jesus. And dear God, we love you. We thank you for our visitors, for all who tuned in. Dear God, thank you. Now, Father, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in thine eyesight. O oh Lord, our God, our rock, for we ask these things in faith, believing that they're already done. We ask in the authority of Jesus the Christ, ever giving thanks. And all of God's people together said, Amen. Well, overtaken by the love of Christ, I made a vow to give him my life. Table on the potter's wheel. Mold and shape me, Lord, that I may be filled and live in memory. What you did for me, for me. Oh yeah, you did for me. How you set me free, set me free, set me free. At dark Calvary. So, a one that is ready, one that's ready. I want to be used by you. I want to be, I want to be a worthy vessel. Lord, I want to do, do, do just what, what you, you want, want me to. Teach me and show me do, do, truly how to love. Do, do, just like that sacrifice do, do, from heaven above. Do, had never been broken Stronger words Had never been spoken from you It is finished Teach me how to finish A copy love From heaven above Wanna live in memory I wanna live How you Free. What you did then me free Heavenly Heavenly I want to be I want to be a worthy vessel Want to be you Set me free. 
Church of Christ, come on, come on, where stop Sundays on, stop at on, Central on. make a difference. She come on, come on, stop 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 on, stop